Hey, J-Squad. Happy Friday. Yay, 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 yay. Right? We done made it through another work week. Okay? We got the weekend coming up. I know you guys got some fantastic stuff going on. I don't. Right? But anyway, uh, make sure you make it happen for yourself. And um, make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. All of my social medias is down in the description box. Right down there. And as well as my email and my cash app. Now, my email, this is how you get your lovely Make It Happen For Yourself t-shirts. Make It Happen For Yourself t-shirts, okay? Make It Happen For Yourself t-shirts, all right? Make It Happen For Yourself t-shirts. The red has black and white lettering. And we have it in black as well as in white, Okay, make it happen for yourself. You email me your full name, full address, size, and color. I'll email you back your uh, shipping and handling, and your uh, and then your total balance, and then you cash out me your total balance for your T-shirt. Okay, make it happen for yourself. T-shirts, twenty five dollars. Like I said, I may have a sale on them. It won't be a big, big sale, but I just need to get rid of a few more of these. Okay, so email me. All right, now. I got an update, right, about Pastor Dwayne Dawkins. That is the pastor where there was an alleged, well, there was a sex tape, and allegedly he was in it with another man having sex, right? So this was two weeks ago, and, um, you know, then I got, I wasn't well for a few days, and then uh, life went on, right? And I forgot about it. I actually forgot about him, right? And well, and I told y'all that the next Sunday, I think which was last, going to be last Sunday or Sunday before, because it was two weeks ago I did this. He was going to have to get up in the pulpit and say something. You weren't going to be able to get up there and quote scriptures and preach and act like nothing happened, right? I'm chilling in my house, y'all. That's why I got on this jacket. I refuse, refuse to turn my heat back on. My hands is cold, but I'm just, it's warm outside. And for some reason, it's always chilly in my house, right? But I'm not turning that heat back on. It's April. It's April, and I'm not turning it back on. I turned it on for a minute last night to warm up the house, and I turned it off. I'm just not, because my gas bills are high. So, we're just going to work it out. Anyway, uh, there, so like I said, there, there was a, a sex tape, and allegedly it was him. Now, like I told you all before, you couldn't see his face. You could see his body. So, his wife would know his body, right? I mean, here on down, you can see everything. Just couldn't see his face. And you can see the gentleman that he was with, right? Now, like I told y'all, he was going to have to get up in that pulpit and say something. So what he did was say it wasn't him. He denied it. He denied it, which is what you do at first anyway. It's a shock. You don't want everybody to know. You got to process it. So he denied it. That's what, in my research, I'm finding out he denied it, right? And I'm guessing that the pressure got so much, especially in his home, because he made a very long public apology, right? A very, very long public apology to his wife, right? Now, where did it go? A very long public apology to his wife. Here it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's too long for me to read. Uh, but he made a very public apology to his wife. I'm going to go over it a little bit. But... I believe that the pressure got too much. He has three children and a wife that's been by his side. Now, the shocking thing that I found out about this is that this had happened in the beginning of their relationship. Why would you marry him? Why, why, why would you marry him? Listen, y'all, I'm not an expert on gayness. I'm not, but I got common sense. If someone likes the same sex and then they like you, they're going to go back to the same sex. That's just what I, my experience of seeing it. They're going to go back to that. That's what they like. They may be in an opposite sex to fulfill with society or their family or whatever they think they're supposed to do. But if they like same sex, man or woman, they're going to eventually go back to that. They're going to go back to that, especially when they're hiding it, right? Especially when they're hiding it. You know, that's going to be a guilty pleasure, something sneaky, sneaky they do, right? Like I said, and it was said, it's a known fact, that he, she, he had did that in the beginning of their marriage. Now, let me read you a few things so I get that. Uh, 
He says his wife has been amazing. I'm sure she has. He said he never voiced his private struggles. Earlier in our marriage, an indiscretion of the same nature, this is what he's saying in the letter, this ain't hearsay, this is what he's saying in the letter, an indiscretion of the same nature that was exposed happened, and I shared with her, my family, my leaders, and my church what I was dealing with. She felt deceived and robbed of the security that she deserved in our marriage. Absolutely. I was given the tools and the village to work through the layers of these challenges, but didn't always maintain my focus. Together, we worked with families, leaders, etc., and she committed to work with me through it all due to her love for God, her love for me, and her love for our sons that we, that we, that, uh, and all that we had cultivated together. However, she never had anything to do with my choices and actions of infidelity. Now, this man had already cheated with a man. Let me tell y'all something. I don't care how love, how in love I was with a man. If at any reason, and he, she, it was it was facts. Wasn't like what somebody, Betty Jean, them told me is facts. He said, I'm struggling with this. He was caught in an indiscretion. That's what he's calling it, right? I would have had to immediately dissolve the marriage. Why? Because in my good brain, I know it's going to happen again. May not happen this week, may not happen next week, may not happen next year, but five, ten, seven years, it's going to happen. And the longer you delay <clears throat> the inevitable, the worse it's going to be on you and your feelings and your heart. I don't want to hurt my own feelings. I'm not going to hurt my own feelings on something that I know he's already told me. So, what I would have done, we could continue to be friends. We've got these kids. I don't know if she had one, two, or three kids at the time when this discretion happened. We'll co-parent. We'll be friends. But in a relationship, we will not be. Because there's no way I can lay down. First of all, there's no way I can look at you and, and, and know you didn't have sex with a man. And, and that, that, that would just be all the distraction. I couldn't even focus on you or nothing else. You walking around here and I know you didn't have sex with a man. I could not think that away. I couldn't. It just wouldn't happen, right? When you make a love to me, do you think it's me or is you wishing it was him? Like all these questions, you know, plus I'm petty, so my mind works pettily. Is that a word, pettily? Um, and, and, I, and, you know, I don't know if all the kids have been had, like I said, but I don't, wouldn't have had no more if they hadn't. So she puts herself in this position because you're so in love. And I don't know why I've seen it. You know, I'm a church girl. I've seen it for years and years and years. I'm not in nobody's bedroom, but you can look at some folks and be like, mm-hmm, right? And then they come up with a wife, and then they'll sometimes, most of the time, they adopt a child or get a child from somewhere, right? Um, and it's like, why? Why? Why, why would you do that? Why would you do that to the child? That's number one. I got something I'm going to say, but I'm going to put it in my book. It's a revelation. It's going to be shocking, right? Um, you don't do that to a child. You don't do that to a child. child has no choice in who his parents are. So if you know this man is gay, why would you have kids with him? Why? Why would you do that to your kids? To humiliate, to embarrass. So many emotions can go with that, right? I, you know, so many emotions can go with that. So he's apologized. Now, so that was the first week. He said, wasn't me. Mm -mm. No, hell no, that wasn't me. I, but I believe what has happened, his friends and family, are probably just maybe his wife said, you know, that's you. And especially if she's a woman of God, you know, she weighed heavy on him. She went to scripture. She went and grabbed the Bible. She was walking around there doing all kinds of stuff, right? So he had to be his whole self, be his real true self. Now, he has stepped down. That's a loss of income. He has stepped down. And I, I thought that was his church, like he built it up. Maybe maybe not. I have to investigate that. But I thought it was his church because somebody helped me. I thought, this is my thing, and that may not pertain to him, but if you, let's say me, Jackie Mason, I go and start me a church, right? And then I do some old crazy stuff, some something scandalous. I would think, can't nobody put me out of my church. It's mine. Right? So maybe that wasn't his church. I don't know. I don't know how that go. I don't know if he's in the Pentecostal thing. I don't know how that go because, you know, Pentecost 
So people do different do different things. They got a governing board. They got all these folks, right? But um, he has he made a very long. It's a letter. Actually, it's an apology letter. It's an apology letter to everyone. But he mainly talked about his wife, which he should have, and his kids. But you know, to the other members of the clergy, his congregation, and to all the folks that you know uh, believed in him, right? And you know, he's embarrassed. Uh, but see, listen, y'all, we, and I'm going to talk on this tonight. I'm going live tonight. Oh, this is Friday. We've got to stop, especially in, I don't know about other churches, but Baptist churches, we got to stop acting like these gay folks ain't there. They invisible. We don't see that they're gay. We got to stop acting like that. Now, I don't know what the protocol to that is. I'm not a clergy. I'm not a, you know, I'm just a person that believes in God, right? But we got to stop acting like these gay folks ain't up in church. We got this women. We got to stop marrying them and going with them because it because you want that prestige because you with the, the pastor because you with the deacon because you with the organist the best musician in the world and he just up there flaming he flaming he can set a house on fire right we got to stop doing that we got to stop doing that and we have to start acknowledging these people for who they are now we may not believe in what they what they doing and all of that but we have to stop acting like. We don't see it and it's invisible so that they'll be comfortable to be who they are and won't hurt another woman, another family. You know, quit they'll quit hurting women and quit hurting families, right? Now, I'm going to say this. I, I think if I was with a man and he was gay, I think I would know it. I would like to think that I would know it, right? Because when, like, when I look at the picture here, when it first came out, the first picture I saw, I saw all I saw was gay. And I know you can't judge. You ain't supposed to judge. But that's what I saw. It jumped right off the picture at me, right? So I know if you're in a relationship with him, his his um, his mannerisms, the way he behaved, like you can't hide who you are. You cannot hide who you are. It's going to come out. You can hide it for a day or two, maybe a couple weeks, something. You can't hide who you are. The real you will come out, right? So I want to know how was she with this man? See, because there's a lot of times, y'all, and I, know I might get some negative feedback on it, but there's a lot of times we want to be so prestigious and hold a place in life that we're willing to sacrifice our integrity and what we believe in to achieve that, right? And that is a special, that is very, uh, I don't even know what the word to use, but that happens in the church. That happens a lot in the church because that the church is a prestigious place. We hold it up high, right? So a lot of folks want to be the this, the that, the this, and the that, and the Missy Muchy and the Mr. Muchy in a church, right? A lot of people want, they, they, you know, I heard a pastor say one time, a long time ago, uh, I, it wasn't my pastor, I, was, I went on went to church with this guy, and his pastor said, a lot of folks are not where they want to be in life or who they want to be in life, so they come to church so they can be everything they want to be, right? They boss folks around, you know. So, and, I, and ever since he said, this was a long time ago, ever since he said that, I've noticed that, right? Um, the people that bark the loudest in church, ain't, they can't got no control of their home life, right? So, um... We have to stop, and I'm going to speak specifically to women. We have to stop engaging in these men that we know gay, think gay, anything about gay, right? We have to stop doing that just because he the, he the pastor of XYZ Church or he the head such and such. And he Mr. Muchy Much over here. Got to stop doing that. Got to stop doing that because you're going to end up getting hurt. You're going to end up getting hurt. Because he, he's not going to stay hidden. That is, and, the, and the, what I've noticed is the higher a man uh, accomplishments, the more brazen he becomes, right? So we as women have to stop that, right? Um, but men, the responsibility lies on you ultimately. It, you know, I'm, I'm saying men because it's mostly men pastors, right? We do have women pastors, but it's, uh, you know, men who are, Engaging in these activities and marrying or or being with women. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. You messing with somebody's whole heart. You messing with somebody's whole everything, right? We got to stop that. Y'all got to stop that. Stop that, right? Um, so he says, he says, I'm just going to go through a little bit. You know, he talks about how amazing his wife is. She's an entrepreneur, an online business owner, a women's empowerment figure. 
He said, due to my actions, this season has set her back due to the public shame and embarrassment that is far from her character as an individual. The fact that her name will forever be associated with this embarrassment is a burden that I'll carry forever. Tamia is a woman of great integrity and my prayer is that people will see her the way she was supposed to be seen as a beautiful woman of God, inside and out, an amazing mom, a great friend, and an impactful and, mo and innovative leader. I'm trusting that God will vindicate her, her reputation, and the perception that some people have of her. I know she will persevere beyond this and continue to move into the avenues and areas that God has called her to. Um, when I read the whole letter, it's a whole big letter. It sounds the way it needs to sound, right? Uh, it sounds right. You know, the apology sounds like a real apology. Um, it sounds like a real apology. Um, now, here's the part. I'm going to read a little excerpt from it. It says, I sought no pity and have no excuses for my actions. I own up to all the wrongs I've done and have repented, apologized, and fully embraced the process that comes with the consequences of my unconscionable actions. And then he goes on to apologize to all his family and friends and everybody and everybody. Um, but he has, he has uh, stepped down as the pastor. I'm trying to get to that part. He has stepped down as the pastor. Uh, let's see, where is it? Okay, let's see. He says, although we preach grace, mercy, love, and forgiveness, we don't condone what I've done. For many of you, I was your hero, your leader, your man of God, your pastor. I am sincerely sorrowful and sorry for the pain, trauma, and any negativity that I caused you and yours. I'm trying to look for the part where he announces that he's stepping down. So it says here, unfortunately, this has negatively impacted my family's livelihood. They have done nothing and have lost so much on account of my actions. If there is anyone who feels compassion enough to donate to them, please feel free to do so here. And then he leaves her cash out, right? Now, uh, there was somewhere where I read where he actually said I have to step down. Uh, I don't know where it's at because it's a very long letter. Uh, it's a very long letter, but it sounds apologetic, right? And it sounds real, and he covered all bases, right? Um, and so I'm happy for that. But now he has to live in his truth. The bad thing is his wife and kids have to face the backlash of what he has done. You know, ain't nothing worse than public humiliation, right? And especially when it wasn't your fault. I got to be humiliated because of what you did, my husband. We connected. I got to be embarrassed and humiliated and sorrowful. Can't go out the house. Like, I, I don't know. I, like I said, I, like I told y'all two weeks ago, I would quickly dissolve the wedding and move to a whole other state, change my name, change my boy's name, and try to start anew. She got an online business, so you can still get a little money. Um, you can still get money. And uh, what else does she do? Uh... I know she has an online business. She's an amazing entrepreneur, online business owner, and women's empowerment figure. Now, she might have to leave the women's empowerment figure part alone until she gets herself, until she gathers herself. And in the middle of this, uh, I was looking in the comments. There's a lady. I said I was going to remember her name, but I'll have it this evening when I go live. Nadia, she wrote a book because she was married to a gay pastor. Right? So the, 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 the topic tonight will be uh, our gay pastors, down low pastors, what do you do? What do we do as a people, right? How do you handle that? Um, that's going to be my topic tonight. I'm going to put it up real in a minute. Uh, I go live at seven tonight. This is Friday. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about these DL church folk, right? And the harm that it is, it does, 
Uh, it does more harm than good. I don't see any good coming out of it if you if you keeping that kind of secret and you engage with a person of the opposite sex, but you know you like the same sex, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'll be talking about. But I just wanted to come on here and give y'all an update real quick about um, Pastor Dwayne Dawkins have written an apology letter. And he has covered all bases of everyone in this letter, right? And he wants, he has stepped down so he no longer has that income, um, his family, for his family. And so he's asking for donations uh, to his wife. Now, uh, again, I'll be talking about that tonight. Now, don't forget to hit like, share, comment, subscribe. If you want to donate to my channel. I ain't did nothing wrong to nobody, but I need some help too. If you want to donate to my channel, please do, please do. My cash app is down in the description box. If you want to buy a t-shirt, anything you want to do, if you just want to send me an email of support, I appreciate it all. Because let me tell y'all something. All of that, when people email me or, or comment or whatever they do, uh, it uplifts me, right? Whether I agree with what they're saying or not, um, it uplifts me. It's always okay to be in a healthy dialogue, right? When it's not okay, when it's unhealthy. But no one has ever disrespected me or anything, thank God. Um, so, um, you know, keep it keep it going, right? But again, donate to my channel. I need y'all. Donate to my channel. Uh, but anyway, I, I will see you guys tonight at 7. Uh, yeah, 7. Tonight at 7. Okay, so anyway, be safe, be good, and uh, bye-bye, okay? I just wanted to let